Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and the market has taken off. We're over 1.7 trillion. You've got an XRP that has been up as much as over 10% today. And Bitcoin did a pretty big pullback, at least five plus thousand dollars. It had hit as high as 61,000 something, I believe. But I wanted to show you this. This is from Coin Paprika. I wanted to show you this as it, there there have been we've seen pullbacks we've seen all sorts of ups and downs over the course of the year but we've seen an SEC lawsuit of course but through all of that we've got an, a 47 cent XRP and XRP is up 235 percent for the year um, and that is really an unbelievable thing in fact if you compare it to what Bitcoin has done. Bitcoin's up 1,058%. If you think about it from this perspective, all that XRP has been given is negative press for the entire year and goes up 235%. All Bitcoin has received is showers of praise. Every CNBC, it's like an open door. Come on our show and tell everybody how great Bitcoin is, even though we all know that it's not. But tell everybody how great it is Come on, Mike Novogratz. Come on and tell everybody how great it is when you know, and boy does he know, that XRP has all kinds of advantages and is a much better technology than Bitcoin. But go on and just talk about Bitcoin and don't talk about XRP. With all of that and an open door for, mark, for the marketing program, which is what Bitcoin really is, with all of that, it's only got a 750 750% higher return than XRP who has done all of this and that's who's done all this under an SEC lawsuit that's because people aren't stupid people know what XRP is and they know what Bitcoin is there's no amount of marketing program and not telling the full truth that will that will get around that simple fact is that people are not stupid <laughs> and, the, and the people that go on and they tell you all the things that, that Bitcoin is all things to all people and all that, they're not telling you the truth. And I think people are smart enough to see that. That's the reason on this channel, I do not beat around the bush. We're going to tell you the good, the bad, the ugly for all of it. Now, I wanted to show you this. This is a little video that was going around yesterday from Curious Wang. He's the CEO of BitTrue and he runs a really good exchange. I, I wanted to at least show you what he had to say. My name is Curious. I'm CEO and co-founder of Bitu. So Bitu is a crypto exchange. We launched ourselves last July, and then uh, that's one big move we decide is that when we launched ourselves, we decide to up in SRP as our best currency. So today, Bitu is an SRP central exchange. We are not just adopt SRP as best currency. On top of that, actually, we also build a lot of financial service product for SRP as well. For example, we are probably the very first exchange offer uh, earning interest while you holding SRP on B2. And then just like a month ago, we also launched crypto back loan for SRP. That means today you can not just earn SRP while you hold SRP on B2, but it's a, you can also pledge SRP as a collateral and then borrow USDT, stablecoin or Bitcoin for other purpose. So this is very important. So we actually B2 I would say SRP, adopt SRP as best currency is just one single step. But on top of that, we're building something else. They say financial service for SRP, have more scenario for SRP, and we even run an SRP validator as well. So try to decentralize the whole ecosystem. And then we were even discussing that what could be the future of s what could be the future of the SRP, and what kind of that thing we can work together to make this whole aspirin on demand liquid uh, become bigger and bigger, make it really full adoption. Ripple help us to bring us to the community and then bring the community to be true. So this guy has done one hell of a job with his exchange. I actually had breakfast with him when I was in Singapore. Very nice guy and very smart guy. Now, every time we show you 
the flare IOU prices, um, that's on his exchange on BitTrue. And you'll see that t this morning it's been up as high as, I think, uh, well, here it is, 24-hour high is $1.87. It was up over 88% this morning because I tweeted this out. Um, 88% dollar. Now, the caveat here is these are flare IOUs. We, we do not know what the price could surge or it could crash when the actual tokens come out. I believe that since they're releasing them in in um, in small amounts, or or they're gonna, it's going to be a, a release that goes out over time um, and over or over a, I can't remember maybe over a couple of years. I believe that if a smart contract like this that is going to be Ethereum three or four point no telling what's going to happen. I don't think it's going to be bad, but who knows all right uh this was from yesterday we covered this this is uh john deaton breaking john deaton files motion to intervene in ripple case in sdny as an xrp holder today i'm filing a motion to intervene i'm calling the agency on its arguments and i, and I will see this through to the end read his announcement here now so so jeremy hogan the other attorney he's the official attorney actually you know i'll make them both they're both the official attorneys of the SEC Ripple lawsuit of the Digital Asset Investor channel. Both of these guys are doing great work, and they are good guy, the good guys in this. So here's what Jeremy Hogan had to say about um, his motion to intervene. Oh, you win this case. I love referring to myself as an authority. So I was wondering how individual XRP holder stories would get in front of the judge. It would be awkward at best for Ripple to submit affidavits from XRP owners. That wouldn't go over very well. So of course, to have individual holders in the lawsuit it is perfect and clears up one concern I had about the litigation. Attorney Deaton can submit a motion for summary judgment on behalf of all the XRP owners and attached to the motion, he can include numerous compelling affidavits from now what are parties to the lawsuit the individual holders and he can tell their stories and can emphasize that they had no expectation of profit based on what ripple was doing saying there was no investment contract and also and i think more importantly they could tell the judge how this lawsuit has affected their xrp holdings the money that was lost the inability to trade and they could really put a human face on what the sec is doing the second thing an intervention by the holders does again, through individual statements or affidavits, is it gets in front of the court all the various uses of XRP outside of what Ripple is doing. Look at the motion for intervention and the section on XRP uses by individuals. This is the best part for me. Look at page 18, quote, examples of today's XRP being utilized with no connection, reliance, or knowledge of Ripple, close quote. Now I saw attorney Deaton request this information from people on Twitter and this is really great stuff. XRP owners are using XRP for shopping. They use it as collateral for loans, money transfers, donations. YouTubers are paid in XRP. I need to figure out how to sign up for that. XRP is being used to buy NFTs. And last but not least, XRP is being used to pay for adult websites. Really guys, adult websites. And finally, the third thing that getting this intervention granted does is it forces the judge to make a distinction between sales of XRP that occurred in all sorts of various ways. Having individual holders in the lawsuit would literally force the judge to look at various ways and methods that XRP was acquired. You know, some may have acquired it directly from another person. Some acquired it through an exchange, of course. Some may have even been gifted it. So obviously those aren't investment contracts. I mean, some people probably acquired XRP not even knowing what Ripple was, other than a song by the Grateful Dead. So how can you be looking to a company to increase the value of something when you don't even know that the company exists? It's impossible. So. Remember, the SEC is going to try and lump all of these sales and offerings of XRP under one big eight-year umbrella, and having 10,000 individuals in the lawsuit telling their stories will go a long way to destroying that narrative. So this motion is critical because it really brings three super important things to the lawsuit table. It gives individual stories, it tells the judge the various XRP uses by various owners, and it also gives the judge various methods that XRP was acquired by. So please listen to me. If you hold XRP, it is extremely important that you get involved. If you can add to even one of the above categories, if you can add your story, then it is critical that you get your voice in there. And one of our videos gets like 100,000 views and attorney Deaton says he's only been contacted by about 6,000 people. So get your finger back on the keyboard, look down in the description and hit the... Okay, so if you want to join this, all you have to do is go to his uh, John Deaton's website 
is crypto-law.us and you can click on contact us and it'll pop up his email and mine popped up over here so you can get his email and, and join now same uh, the ripple lawsuit as well this was from wrath of condom the letter ripple filed today asking for sec docs has some big claims that will define this case they're asking for docs claiming the sec is withholding relevant potentially exculpatory exculpatory evidence by not handing over communications and this is important based on information gleaned to date it is clear that the sec was told by sophisticated market participants that xrp was not a security even after soliciting feedback they ran with this until December 20. They, they argue directly cons a, a consideration of the Howey test should consider that the SEC shaped the character of XRP and other digital assets in commerce and what market participants could expect. Seems like they are going hard to get the SEC communications like they know something. I think they do know something. Because, of course, they do. <laughs> Had to have spoken to some of the exchanges. Coinbase, anyone? So that's a good title. Let's say they, um, I like that. They know something. I think Ripple does know something, by the way. I think he's a thousand percent right. And I think the SEC knows they know something. So here's the, um, this is that Ripple uh, attorney letter there that, that he just was talking about. Riz XRP sent me this. Interstellar, now remember, you have Stellar, and then you, Stellar's the foundation for Stellar, and then you have Interstellar, which is the company, I, I compare Interstellar to Ripple, uh, Interstellar is to XLM, as Ripple is to XRP. Interstellar and Velo Labs joined forces. We are thrilled to officially announce that Interstellar and Velo Labs will be joining forces with our combined resources. We look to enhance and revolutionize international settlements for the world. And this was Jed McCaleb himself, Listen to this. Year after year, there have been smart By the way, before I play this, this guy, Jed McCaleb, every time I've ever watched him in a video, he seems to be the most uncomfortable person in the world in front of a camera. And this is no different. Year after year, the events market in Southeast Asia continues to grow. These services are now valued at $150 billion a year. There are millions of unbanked migrant workers that send money back home to their families, yet are not well served by the high fees and slow service provided by the decades-old SWIFT system and fragmented corresponding banking network. Recognizing that the world's financial infrastructure doesn't serve a large majority of the population, the Stellar Development Foundation aims to facilitate the use of decentralized systems to build inclusive and accessible resources for those that need them most. Recently, Illinois Stellar's core focus has been encouraging the implementation and, adopt and adoption of a better cross-currency currency transaction system in Southeast Asia, driven largely by their work with Velo. Velo has formed a number of strategic partnerships with fintech leaders, including Visa, Lightnet Group, Kyber Networks, Chainlink, and others that will continue to expand the company's reach. By tapping into Velo's network of key stakeholders and leveraging Stellar, Velo Labs will be able to provide more efficient, affordable, and accessible financial services for millions of people. Integrating these two teams is a significant step not only for the companies to continue their work together, but for the entire Stellar ecosystem as it offers the potential to drive more anchors to the network. Anchors connect the Stellar network to traditional banking rails so that all the world's currencies can interoperate on a single seamless platform. As the critical link between the Stellar network and the traditional banking system in their respective countries, anchors are positioned to leverage a variety of business models and monetization strategies to best reach their customers. Together, we will increase the number and types of on and off ramps in Asia. This will lead to new business opportunities for both Velo and Stellar communities. This team will deliver products and services built on Stellar that contribute to long-term growth and sustainability of the network and foster the use cases that have clear value for end users. Our plan is to continue both of these efforts and also start to focus more explicitly on adding and growing use cases in ways that lead to a scalable network effects. As we move closer to the future we want to see, where Stellar is connecting global financial infrastructure so that it's faster, more affordable, and more accessible to send money anywhere around the world. Uh, when I created Stellar and founded Interstellar, this was the kind of growth and engagement I hope to see in the ecosystem, with projects and talents from around the world finding innovative, way, innovative ways to use this technology and make a difference in people's lives. Okay, so, and then this is Mike Kennedy, who's the CEO of Interstellar, and what's interesting is Mike Kennedy was also the creator of Zelle. 
And if you look on your phone for your bank's app and you transfer money, there's a good chance that Zelle is used for the transfer of money from bank, your bank to bank or inside of your bank accounts. Hi, I'm Mike Kennedy, the CEO of Interstellar. Interstellar is a technology company revolutionizing financial services. As a strategic partner and advisor to Velo, we're actively contributing to Velo Labs products and architecture development. The key focus with Velo is creating products and services that facilitate better cross-border payments. Our collaboration includes things such as money collection, liquidity for foreign exchange and payouts, and technical integration with regulated money transfer networks. Velo Labs has a clear value proposition, building the world's first federated credit exchange to enable trusted partners to issue digital credits and facilitate borderless value transactions for businesses. So to me, the boldest and most important innovation that we're bringing to market with Bella Labs is a useful, interoperable, and inclusive solution that leverages the benefits of distributed systems like Stellar and the Bella Protocol, while focusing on real-world use cases to make a strong impact in the market. In my view, Bella Labs is one of the strongest blockchain projects out there and its technology vision fills a major gap in the remittance market. Together with Lightnet and Interstellar, Velo is connecting a really strong ecosystem of established companies. Combine that with the energy that we're experiencing day to day when working with Velo Labs, I feel confident that they will achieve real world business adoption. Okay, I thought that was interesting. You don't see him come out much. Um, also, we've got, let's see, I wanted to show you this. This is. Um, this is Velo that they partner with. One of their advisors is this Michael Cowens. And if you look at his resume, he used to be regional sales director, Asia Pacific for Ripple. Um, so, and then as you go down, I wanted to show you who their investors are. Lightnet, 7, 7-Eleven Bank, I guess. CP Group, Visa, and Stellar. Okay, um, Stephen Bulldiep had, had put this video out. I think this is great. Central bank, digital currencies, uh, and then this is until mid-2021, we will decide whether to advance further the digital euro project. Listen to what they say. Second, a European acceleration on CDBC, Central Bank Digital Currency. We, including we Europeans, cannot allow ourselves to lag behind on CDBC. That means that we may create, if necessary, a retail CDBC in order to ensure access to central bank money for the general public, in particular in countries where the use of cash is declining. It also means that we may decide to issue a wholesale CDBC with the aim of improving the functioning of financial markets and institutions and to preserve the anchor rule of central bank money for interbank transactions. Within the euro system, the ECB published a report last October and we opened a public consultation until mid-January. Towards mid-21, the euro system will decide whether to advance further a digital euro project, which would start with an investigation phase. Whatever the decision, let me stress that it would complement cash, not replace it. The euro system will never abandon cash as it is part of citizens' freedom to choose their means of payment. As a principle, central banks need to have an in-depth understanding of innovation and shouldn't be afraid to learn by doing. I speak today from the Banque de France lab where we work with startups and innovators. And we are currently working with innovators from the private sector to conduct a program of eight experiments on all sales CDBC. Huh. Wonder if it's one like this one where Ripple's piloting private ledgers for central banks. Okay, <clears throat> I wanted to show you this from Bank XRP. The Monard Consensus 100 Most Influential People in Crypto 2021. Brad Garlinghouse weighs in at number five. And then you have number 41, David Schwartz, and number 57, Michael Arrington from Arrington XRP Capital. Congrats to them. Um, in the, hey, in the description of my video, you'll see this. 
<clears throat> not the NFT giveaway, but a link to iTrust Capital. They're doing an iTrust Capital NFT giveaway. Um, the, the, this one, they're going to give away, I think, five of them. And it says that the owners, the ones that win this, these are the people who refer the most new clients to, um, to iTrust Capital in the next 77 days. Will <clears throat> These five will have no account. They'll, they'll never pay monthly account fees for life. And so that's a, you get the NFT and you won't have to pay any account fees if you win that one. That's the people that refer the most clients to them in 77 days. Then this contender edition, um, anyone who successfully refers two people or more during the 77 days, you'll get um, an NFT and you'll get four months, $120 value of platform services at no cost. And then they've got all the details of the thing here, but you need to check that out. That's going to be cool. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that I Trust Capital is doing an NFT giveaway, and you need to go open a, an IRA there. I, I opened a Roth and an, a SEP IRA. My Roth IRA, I put money in there. I invest in here. I'll, I'll show you, by the way, some of the um, the things you can invest in on the platform. I forgot to do that. You can get Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, EOS, Stellar, XRP. XRP right now is stalled on there just like it is everywhere. But anyway, and then you can get gold and silver on the blockchain. Thanks for listening.